If the government paid you 20,000 Jamaican dollars cash, would that be enough to get you to pay your taxes? I'm Kalila Reynolds, financial journalist and educator. The national budget debates are now in full swing, and opposition spokesman and finance Julian Robinson is poking holes in Finance Minister Nigel Clark's presentation. One of those holes is in the reverse tax credit. This is where the government is giving $20,000 cash to all taxpayers who earn less than 3 million Jamaican dollars a year and whose taxes are paid up. Julian said he supports the idea, but he doesn't think it's gonna work. But I must say, I do not see the potential take up of this for persons who are not filing their taxes now. The incentive of $20,000, which is a one-off payment, will not bring people into the tax net who are outside. I believe those who are already filing will continue to do so and benefit. But someone who has not filed before is going to assess whether their tax liability is greater than the one-off $20,000 payment. Now that's a good point because most people pay more than 20000 in taxes. So for someone who isn't paying taxes, that one-off payment probably won't sway them into filing and paying. But if you already pay, you just take the money and that's it. Another point for Julian was about how the government plans to pay for the budget. Remember, Nigel said that they're getting $45 billion from the sale of receivables. But Julian was like, hmm? Tell us more. Now, what does the securitization of receivables mean? It could mean that the government has some monies owed to it, some assets, or some future earnings that it has sold up front and has gotten the cash for selling it up front at a discounted rate. But, Mr. Speaker, we don't know because the minister has not provided any detailed explanation. And to be honest, I was wondering the same thing. I was actually planning on asking Dr. Clark about that, but now that Mr. Robinson has raised it, I hope the minister responds in his closing presentation, or perhaps even sooner, because this part was a bit vague, and as they say, the devil is in the details. Which receivables exactly will the government sell, and who's buying? Are they getting a one-off payment, or will it flow continuously throughout the year? Um, also, what are the terms of the sale? What cut does the buyer get? Questions, questions. Now, the third point from Julian that I'll get into today is about the impact of removing GCT from imported raw foods. As I mentioned in my previous video, the whole point of taxing imported raw foods was to protect local farmers who can't compete with cheap imports. Nigel said we had to remove the tax or be blacklisted by the World Trade Organization, which would make it difficult for us to trade with other countries. But Julian said, okay, fine. Well, what's your plan to help farmers then? So given that we didn't have the choice to lift the GCT, how are we going to ensure and protect ourselves from cheap goods being dumped in Jamaica? Because the reality is that the playing field is not level. We are competing against countries who subsidize their farmers in a way that we can't. And we know the world is not level. And we don't have the resources to do it. So how will we protect the local farming sector, particularly where those farmers supply the tourism industry? And now the option is to import a lot of cheaper alternatives. Nigel did say that there are other ways to protect local farmers. He also mentioned that GCT isn't the only tax on imported foods. There are also hefty customs duties which will remain. But the bigger issue is... How do we get local farmers to be more competitive in the first place so that they don't need a tax on imports to compete on price? What incentives and assistance will you give our farmers so that they can produce better quality and still have good prices? These are some of the questions we expect Nigel to answer in his closing presentation. Now, I also have another video coming up from Julian about JUTC, the government-run buses. <laughs> a lot to say there. And of course, we'll be covering the rest of the budget presentations, including Prime Minister Andrew Holness and opposition leader Mark Golding next week. So make sure that you're subscribed to my newsletter so that you don't miss all of our recaps and budget highlights. Click the link up here or in the description below to subscribe to my newsletter. Let's get this money. Let's get this money. <laughs>